Hi, welcome back. Today we are dissecting an intriguing question. Why did Nirvana distance themselves from Butch Vig, the genius producer who played a crucial role in their groundbreaking album, Nevermind? Nevermind was just a, a, a zeitgeist moment for me. Who actually ended up with the actual credits for the album? And last but not least, we will unravel the question that has puzzled fans for decades. What does Vig really think about Nirvana dissing Nevermind? Watch till the end to get your questions answered. Before we begin, we would greatly appreciate it if you could give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's get started. Vig meeting Nirvana before Dave joins. Now let's rewind in time when producer, engineer, writer, musician Butch Vig first encountered Nirvana while producing records for the independent label Sub Pop. At that moment, Nirvana was part of Sub Pop's roster and had just returned from touring. They were scheduled to record their next album under the label. However, this was before drummer Dave Grohl had joined the band, and it seems there were some difficulties within the group. Vig claimed that the band weren't necessarily happy with the lineup, especially Kurt. However, at Smart, the Wisconsin studio co-owned by Vig, Steve Marker, and Duke Erickson, they managed to record six or seven songs. They had plans to return for further recordings, but things took a turn when major record labels started showing interest in Nirvana. Eventually, they left Sub Pop for Geffen. As a result, the songs Vig had recorded with them initially became demos and were quickly bootlegged. The only track that survived from the initial sessions at Smart was Polly, which was quite a stripped back acoustic song. Despite Geffen's desire to bring in a renowned producer, Nirvana insisted on keeping Butch Vig on board when it came time to record new tracks in the studio. Vig humbly considered himself fortunate and lucky for us, the outcome of their collaboration was the album Nevermind. Vig's impression on the band when Dave joins. When Vig first attended a rehearsal with Nirvana out in the valley, he was already familiar with their new drummer, Dave Grohl, through a cassette Kurt had sent him. But the crude recording quality caused distortion due to being recorded on a boombox. But Vig could already tell that the band was musically cohesive. Upon entering the rehearsal space, Grohl, weighing around 135 pounds, enthusiastically introduced himself to Vig. When asked to play a song, the band delivered a booming rendition of Teen Spirit that overwhelmed Vig, who usually takes down notes on arrangement details. On this occasion, he was simply absorbing the experience. Just, I just, just taking it all in. They finished the song and Kurt was like, what do you think, Which I went, play it again. Right after Dave joined the band, they recorded the new materials at Sound City in Los Angeles. Vig describes it as a fairly straightforward studio with a large live tracking room, an old Neve board, a 24-track analog Studer tape machine, a decent assortment of tube mics, some good compressors, but not much outboard gear. The recording process heavily leaned on a live perspective. Dave was positioned in the center of the room while the bass and guitars were separated for isolation. Despite this, Vig pushed the band to achieve the best results. He made Chris rework some of his bass parts and Kurt Cobain perform several guitar overdubs. As Vig recalls, Cobain recorded a significant number of rhythm guitars and layered clean and distorted tracks in nearly all of the little solo sections. Before we delve further, we deeply value your support. Show your love by picking up some of our Soundscapes Rock merch. It's specially designed for you, and we've got plenty more designs on the way. Browse your favorites through soundscapesrock.com or in the link below and use the code SSROCK for 10% off your order. Now back to our story. Now, if you're a curious cat like me, you'd be wondering what's like to work up close with Nirvana. Vig recalled his first impressions on the band that when Kurt was on, he was really focused, funny, witty, and ready to go. Chris has always been really amiable and kind of low key and easygoing. Dave, on the other hand, brought besides incredible drumming, a goofiness that added a lot of levity to the band. Cathartic and intense passion is how Butch Vig chooses to describe the experience of hearing Nirvana perform either in concert or on tape. He thinks that very few artists possess such a sensibility in their nature. 
he believed that Kurt in particular was both incredible and mysterious. He shared that Kurt never spoke about his personal struggles, only hinting at frequent stomach pain, which could have been due to an ulcer. He always said he had a lot of stomach pain and uh, an ulcer, or there's, there's no way to know exactly. Vic spent a significant amount of time trying to decode these struggles through Kurt's lyrics. I'd ask Kurt, you know, what's going on in this? And, he, and he'd go, it's just, that's just what I'm singing. You know, he never really articulated to me uh, what the songs were about. But Kurt's typical response was vague stating, it's just what I'm saying. This left Vig much like the fans analyzing the lyrics to comprehend the singer's mindset. He argued that one might not necessarily want to understand the exact meaning behind a song. As millions of people listened to Nevermind attempting to interpret what Kurt was singing about, yet without having a clear understanding, we always managed to emotionally connect with it. The album's engineering credit showed that both the band and the producer had shared it, yet Vig confirmed that it was quite far from reality. So was it only Kurt, Chris, and Dave who were directly involved with the technical adjustments? Not really. Vig was usually involved in co-production and engineering in most of his projects at the time. His journey began in the punk scene where many bands wished to contribute to every aspect of the music making process. So Vig wasn't very concerned about receiving solo credit. In fact, several records he contributed to afterward are marked as co-productions. Now the answer to our main question, what Vig thinks of Nirvana dissing, never mind. The success of Nevermind was so overwhelming that the band began to diss Nevermind. Vig understood their perspective while speaking with Apple Music host Strombo. He was not prepared to deal with just the, the in, intense scrutiny and uh, and sometimes criticism, you know, sellout. You know, a lot of punk purists were saying they, they were sellouts and uh, he couldn't go anywhere, you know. He realized that it's not easy to maintain the credibility of a punk rock image all while selling 20 million records, which often pushes one to disown and walk away from such commercial success. He implied this is a key reason why they chose to work with producer Steve Albini to create a raw, simpler sounding record in their third album in utero. However, in the period between finishing the Nevermind sessions and the album's release, Vig mentions that all three band members expressed immense satisfaction with the work. Cobain himself contacted him multiple times to express how remarkable the album sounded. This sentiment lasted as even 20 years later during Vig's collaboration with Dave and Christ on the Foo Fighters' 2011 album, Wasting Light, both band members praised the production quality of Nevermind saying, man, Nevermind sounds so good, Vig. You really nailed it on the head. Now that you've heard the full story about Nirvana's relationship with Butch Vig, we'd love for you to join in on the conversation. Do you think Nirvana made the right choice in distancing themselves from Vig? And what, in your opinion, are the key artistic differences between In Utero and Nevermind? We're also curious to know who you think was the better pick for the band's producer. Was it Butch Vig or was it Steve Albini? We can't wait to hear your thoughts. Please hit the like button and subscribe for more stories like this. Thanks for watching and until next time.